Jacob story. Uh, one of my favorite verses in the Bible is about how God always needs you to hold on to him, no matter what. So, uh, Sophie, can you come read this verse? Come on up, Sophie. Just this first little bit, okay? Just up to the word me, right there. Okay. If you hold on to me for... For dear life, says God, I'll get you out of any trouble. I'll give you the best of care if you'll only get to know and trust me. Thank you. And that's from Psalms 91, verse 14. God always says to us that as long as we hold on to him, he'll always take care of us. But when I think about my life, sometimes it's hard to hold on to God. One time in my life, I had to hold on, but I just couldn't hold on anymore. So one time I was on a boat at Camp Foothills. You guys know what Camp uh, Mountain View is? You guys know what, yeah, the Camp Hope? Yeah, so there's one in Alberta, and it's called Camp Foothills. And we were on the lake, and on this lake, uh, we were on a boat, and I was on one of the big floaties. And I was on the big floaty, and I was getting dragged on the back of the floaty, holding on, and I was with my friend named David. So it was Pastor Ben and David, and we were on the floaty getting pulled by the boat. And as we were going, uh, we were having a good time. We kept telling the drivers of the boat to keep going faster and faster. It was getting kind of fun, getting scary. But what I realized was one of my legs was in the water. So as we were going fast on the boat, my leg was skipping in the water, and it was okay. We kept saying, go faster, go faster. But as we were going faster... I felt my pants get a little bit looser. And it was, I was like, maybe it's just like, you know, it's okay, I'm just skipping on the water. But then, instantly, my shorts shot down to my ankles. So I had to do a split while skidding on the water. I'm holding onto the, onto the tube, and I'm holding onto the handle, and we're skidding on the water, and I'm screaming for my dear life. And we're holding on, and my friend, David, he says, you know, Ben, don't let go, don't let go. And I was getting really scared. But then I felt my boxers getting loose. And we're skipping on the water, we're going, we're going really fast. And then before I knew it, my boxers shot down, shot down right to my ankles. And I'm screaming, holding on to dear life. And he's saying, don't let go, don't let go, it's not safe. And I told him I couldn't hold on any longer. And I let go and I went flying in the air, and I landed in the water, and the first thing I did was pull up my pants and everything, and I fixed myself. But when I think about it, is if I didn't let go, it might have been safer, but I had to let go because I couldn't handle it anymore. But I think the Bible, just like the verse that Sophie just read, God says, hold on to me, even if things get bad. No matter how bad things might get, no matter how scary it might be or how dangerous it is, God says, don't let go and hold on to me for dear life because I'll take care of you and because I love you. Does that make sense? So always hold on to God no matter what happens. Does anyone want to pray? Okay, I'll, okay, I'll pray, I'll pray. Everyone <laughs> close your eyes. Okay, dear Heavenly Father, please bless us, Lord, to be good at church. Thank you that we have heard a story by Pastor Ben, and I love you. And help us to learn more and more lessons from everybody. Thank you for the people who have come, and bless the people who are still coming. Help them to be good. Thank you for everything. This is my prayer in the loving holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Good morning, everyone, and happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. We're full house today. In our workplace, if it's full house, we need extra hands. <laughs> Before we start our um, welcome and announcements, I would like to invite Elder Rex. Okay, before we proceed to our inspiration, I would like to call all the elders of the church. Elder Florante Reyes, Elder Victor Ullamas, Elder Mila Franco, to please come here in front. Elder Dana, is Elder Rante here? Elder Florante Reyes. Elder Elimar Acosta. Where are they? Elder Elimar. Elder Florante Reyes. Okay, at this moment, at this moment, we would like to call uh, Pastor Levi Estores and Mrs. Estores to please uh, also come here in front. Pastor Levi Estores just started uh, his ministry last uh, July this year. And as he started his ministry, he became a, uh, a working a working. Um, BC pastor in this church, pastoring Suri Filipino and Burnaby Adventist Church. And they were uh, being accepted here in the church for this year to continue the ministry of this church. And this is to appreciate the humble pastor in his uh, untiring effort and as a church, we would like to give a token of appreciation for him and his wife, Mrs. Estores. And we prepared something for them. This is a, a humble appreciation, Pastor, of your effort and contribution to, to this church. This is a simple, is this a fake flower or a real one? <laughs> we know that Mrs. Estores is allergic to, to flowers. <laughs> yeah. And uh, a 1500, is that 1500? Okay. Thank you, Mrs. and Pastor Estores. We, we, we appreciate you here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Elder Mila will pray for them. Okay, let's pray. Father God in heaven, uh, we come to you this uh, morning to worship and glorify your name. Oh God, uh, in a special way, I pray for Pastor and his wife. Lift them up, oh God, for their ministry. We thank you so much that you give it to us in our church so that they can uh, uh, minister to us, to our family to our children, and above all, to the community around us in here. We know that it's so hard to work in your vineyard, but because you, God, your son, Jesus Christ, the one, that instrument in their lives so that they can move forward, to move this church, to be united in one purpose, is to bring a lot of people in this church that they know Jesus and know God, and they have salvation. Heavenly Father, I pray again, I'll give them a good health, good heart, and good judgment in every way they do. May your will be done. I pray also this church that we all are united to support our pastor and their ministry as well so that they can be uh, able to work with us and for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In behalf of my family, we would like to thank you very much, our people here at Sorry Filipino Church and for the friends and families 
who have come and uh, appreciate our ministry. Thank you very much. Thank you for this gesture of love and appreciation. We will uh, we'll do our best by God's grace to help all of us grow in our love to Jesus. Thank you very much. Can I say something too? Thank you very much as a wife of a pastor. It's my joy to be among the shepherdesses of the whole world in our work. For these 39 years in his, uh, in his ministry, in this ministry, we can say that we praise the Lord for having us the opportunity to be one among those who are really working for God. And as a wife of a pastor, I'm, I'm here. And for those who will be future wives of a pastor, I encourage you to, to be a very supportive one to your husband, pastor, and the Lord will bless you, not financially, but spiritually. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, sometimes we neglect to appreciate our pastor, but we remember them in times of trouble, in times of anything that is happening in our church. And so we, it's um, Pastor's Appreciation Month last month, right? Not this month. So it's better late than never. We appreciate the pastor and also Pastor Ben and the rest of the pastors who are around here and who ever has a family member who has a pastor in their family. Thank you also for those family who have supported them. And so we go to our announcement before our eager um, song leaders here start. <laughs> for potluck today, group two will be in charge, but those who are very willing to help the kitchen, you are very much welcome to help. And then for tonight, we will have a choir practice at the Castillos. You have received the text message, so please do come. And we, today we are starting our um, week of prayer. And so it will be a full week. Last night we started it at um, Isabel's house. And then today, and then on Monday, we will all be meeting at um, Elder Mila's house for the next um, week of prayer. Also for the members of the church, if you have your bulletins, um, there is something here for information for church directory, Suri Filipino SDA. It has your name, please fill that out and update it. Also for the church building fund pledge, Please fill that out and you can drop it in our um, bags. I do believe I have the... Um, that's for the announcement and then I'll do the welcome. Okay. For November 3. Okay, so we, here we have... Jean Bay and Phil Martin, welcome to our church. We have Colleen Russell and Jacqueline Russell. Where are you? Okay, we have Jane Brown, Robin Brown, and Jezreel Brown from CIV, Church in the Valley. Welcome to our church. We have Wayne Campbell. Um, Thor, Th Thalia, Farah, and okay, we have Wayne, Thalia, and Farah Campbell from Abbotsford, CIV. <laughs> Welcome to our church. And then we have the Holsworth family, is that right? H O L L S W O R T H. Did I read that right? <laughs> okay, welcome to our church. We have Jong Hee Park. Tim and Linda, Tim and Linda, and G E. This is G E and or A. Kurt, that's good. Uh, we have Sam and Vanny. 
We have Bonnie and Brennan, um, Viz, uh, um, Lisa Moet, um, Marisol Galindo, um, Jose, Esther, and Jocel yeah. Jocelyn, Josiah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you for helping me out. We also have Ken and Vera. We have, oh, okay, and, ten, and then they wrote at the end, Fraser Valley Adventist Academy. <laughs> Welcome to our church. I hope that you will enjoy a very lovely music and praises to our Lord. However, I would like to invite everyone, um, please find your most comfortable seat. I believe there are more um, seats at the front. Consider this as a concert, so it's a privilege for you to sit at the front. And if you have your phones, please don't forget to turn them off or put them on a vibrate mode so that we won't be distracted when we listen to a heavenly music. For our call to worship, I would like you to turn your um, Bibles with you to Psalm 104, 33 to 34. Psalm 104, 33 to 34. It says here, I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I think that should be the choir's vow. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. May my meditation be sweet to him. I will be glad in the Lord. Now I'm going to give the time to our senior. Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. With a show of thumbs, how is everyone doing this morning? Yeah, okay. So thank you so much to all the parents, teachers, and the supporters of our choir for coming to listen to us this morning. Um, I invite everyone to sing their hearts out as we sing our first song, The Lion and the Lamb.
Please stand for Spirit of the Living God. and girls, young and old, men and women from different walks of life have come to this house of prayer, and we have one object, O Lord, and desire, and that is to worship you and honor you, our creator and our loving God. We invite you to be in our midst, take control of our thoughts. And let the power of your word transform us into what you want us to be so that we'll come out from this hall of worship 
ready to serve others and to reflect your loving character. Thank you very much for hearing and answering our prayer. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, praise team, for that very lovely and beautiful music. Now I would want to invite our deacons to please stand up. I will be reading, oh, in the bulletin I wrote uh, the one for next week. <laughs> I'm advanced. Um, but today, it's November 3rd, it's for our local church budget, okay? And then I'll be reading what it's written here. It says, Sir Roaches, Pastor Jim and Vera shared that many years ago. What they were newlyweds, when they were newlyweds, and Jim was a theology student at Columbia Union College in Tacoma Park, Maryland, they answered an ad to rent a basement apartment from none other than Pastor and Mrs. Eric B. Hare, the famous former missionaries to Burma. All was well until the Huffers awoke on their very first morning in the apartment. All of a sudden, there was a loud scream from Vera. Jim came running to see what was the matter. The sink was full of roaches crawling everywhere. Then she said to him, honey, I just can't stay here. Sadly, they went upstairs to tell Mrs. Hare and request that their deposit be returned. When she heard that, she put her arm around Vera and said these words, my dear, you will never make a missionary. Fortunately, she was mistaken. Not many years later, the Hoffers went to South America as missionaries. Satan has many yucky roaches that sneak their way into our lives and cause trouble. Some of these roaches try to convince us that tithing is not as important or that we should use our tithe in other ways or give it to other entities. How blessed we are. Though when we are faithful, faithfully follow God's directives to bring our tithes and offering into his storehouse for his remnant church, your offering today goes toward our local church budget, which allows for us to be a strong to be a strong presence in our community. Our deacons are ready to serve us. So.
Shall we all rise? Heavenly Father, we bring back all the glory and the honor to you, dear Lord. And we thank you for blessing us in so many ways, for giving us good health so, so that we could work, and also for blessing us um, not only financially, but most is, um, especially spiritually. So, dear Lord, we recognize you as the source of everything, and so we give to you, dear Lord, our part, our tithes and offering, dear Lord. May you please bless it and help us, dear Lord, to be faithful to you um, no matter what. And so we thank you for um, blessing us um, in the best way that you know. And we thank you, dear Lord, for listening and answering our prayers. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay. Whether we ask in prayer to know him better, ask him to do something in the life of someone, or ask him to provide for a tangible need, he delights to answer. God delights to give. He is full of compassion, and he longs to grant the request of those who come unto him in faith. He gives to us that we may minister to others and thus become like himself, that is Christ, Object Lessons, page 141. In, in this church, we have our tradition to call and pray for a certain family each week, and the focus of our prayer this week is the Ruliamas family, so I invite them to please come forward. Ruliamas family. And for those who have special request that you want to bring to the Lord, I invite you also to please come forward and we will bring to the Lord whatever is in your heart. And for those who are able, let us all kneel down for prayer. Holy, 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 O Lord God Almighty, Lord of heaven and earth, Lord, with humbleness we come before thy holy presence to worship you, to honor you, to adore you, because you are the one worthy of worship and praise, because you alone is holy, you alone is righteous. O Lord, we open our hearts to you. We long for your presence in our life. We long for your presence in our hearts. 
But Lord, if there is sin in our heart, we know that you cannot dwell in it. So Lord, forgive us. Cleanse us, especially our falling short of what you want us to be. Oh Lord, we pray that you will be in our midst as we worship you today. And Lord, we long to hear your word. So Lord, help us to open our hearts for your message that will be given to us by your servant, Pastor Levi Torres. I pray that you will anoint his lips and give us your word of wisdom and understanding that will be drawn, that will uh, help us to be drawn close to you. Oh Lord, we have the Rulyamas family. You have been blessing this family a lot and they have been a blessing to our church. I pray that you will continue to bless them. Bless Victor as the head of the family. Give him wisdom and strength and, uh, and understanding and love for her, his family. Bless Belia and give her also the wisdom and love. Bless their source of income. And I pray that you will be with his children, Jamil, JR, and Belson. Oh Lord, they have been a big blessing, especially to the youth in this church. They've been an inspiration for those who are growing up. I pray that you will continue to be with them through your Holy Spirit, to guide them, to lead them, and teach them in everything that they will do. And Lord, as we go on with our worship service, I pray that you will help us to look up to you and give our hearts to you that you may be in control of our thoughts and that we will all be receptive of your words. Thank you, Lord, for those who have chosen to come and worship with us today. I pray that you will bless them and help them, Lord, to feel the warmth of our family in this church. Thank you, Lord, for your love. We commit our service to you in this time, O oh God, and may you be in control of everything. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.
Thank you, FVAA Senior Choir. That was beautiful. We can go home now. No. <laughs> we still have our speaker. And before he speaks, I would also like to um, thank um, Pastor Ben for doing the children's story. I forgot to thank you earlier. You can come back again and do some children's story. That's why I won't forget you for doing that. Thank you. And our speaker today, as mentioned earlier, is our own church pastor, Pastor Levi Estorius. And before he shared the message today, I would like to invite this um, lovely lady to read our scripture reading. Thank you. Happy Sabbath. Today's scripture, today's scripture reading is found in Isaiah 40, verse 8. It says, the grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our God stands forever. Good morning, church. Good morning. Last Saturday, I was with uh, 61 Adventist couples who, were, who renewed their marital vows at Whistler in one of the hotels in, in Whistler. Uh, some couples were married five years, some were, some were married 60 years. But anyhow, it was my honor and a privilege to witness the renewing of marital vows of these 61 couples together with their children and uh, families it was a very joyful worship experience on my part. But today, I'm on a different environment. I'd like to thank the VAA family for joining us today, from the students to the parents to the faculty and staff of this great Adventist school. I really praise God and I thank you for choosing Surrey Filipino Church as a part of your as a place of your worship today. And we as members and the officers of this church are really privileged and we count this as a special honor to be uh, visited by you and for you joining us today in our worship. Thank you very much, uh, Mom Jean, for that beautiful choir in the first piece that you were singing. My mind was traveling somewhere. Is that from Africa or that or from which part of the world. So uh, my mind was wandering in other parts of the world and I was imagining some of my brothers and sisters probably in other parts of the world worshiping God and honoring our Creator. Of course, in the second piece, now I realize that the first one I thought it was the language of the angel. And uh, in the second piece, now I realize I said, I'm now uh, a part of the great, this great family. My mind was wandering... Uh, in Australia, in England, in uh, other parts of the world that speaks English, that God's people are worshiping together and giving glory and honor to our God. So thank you very much for uh, preparing our hearts to receive God's word today. Our topic today is the supreme authority. The supreme authority. <clears throat> Six hundred years uh, before Christ was born, long, long time ago, to be exact, it was 606 BC. That means before Christ was born. God's people, which are known in the Bible as the Israelites, was facing an imminent crisis. Why did I say that? Because during the time, 606 BC, the Israelites were under the power of the Egyptian, the Egyptian power. They were paying high tribute to the kingdom of Egypt because they were under this great power. But the following year, 605 BC, there was a war between the Babylonians and the Egyptians. And the Egyptians were defeated. Nebuchadnezzar II was ruling all over the world and Israel, of course, was again forced to pay tribute to this great 
kingdom. At this time, also, God gave a message to, I, to, to Jeremiah, his prophet. And the Lord said to Jeremiah, Write, write all these words that I am saying to you and request your secretary, his name is Barok. You, if you read that in the book of Jeremiah, you'll encounter that name. Jeremiah chapter 36. And Jeremiah said to Barok, Barok, sit down and listen to what God is saying to us. And so Jeremiah dictated what God was saying to, to him, gave, giving warning to the Israelites that if they, will, if they will not repent, if they will not change their ways, if the rulers of Israel will not change their ways, Babylonian power will invade Israel and destroy this pride which is Jerusalem. So Baruch wrote God's message and he went to the temple and read this letter to the people. And as he was reading this letter from God to the people, the people were, the, the fear came into their hearts. And religious leader, after they have heard that, gathered together and said, this message must go to the king. During the time, the king of Israel was Jehoiakim. And so they gathered together and went to the presence of King Jehoiakim. Barak was there and he started to read the scroll. During the time, there was no Bible yet. God's authority during the time was written in the scroll. Whatever God says to the prophet, they will write it in the scroll. And the prophet will read it to the people, or the secretary of the prophet will read it to the people. This time, Barak was there. I mean, the, the leaders were there, but Barak and Jeremiah were hidden by the leaders because King Jehoiakim might uh, not be happy with their presence. Because King Jehoiakim said, this prophet is always saying prophecies that are against me. And so Barak and the uh, prophet Jeremiah were hidden by the religious leaders and they were the one who went to the king and read the scrolls one by one. As the leaders were reading the scroll, scroll number one, after reading it, do you know what King Joachim did? He was, because he was sitting in front of a fire pot. And it was burning. After the first page was read, he tore it and threw the scroll where? On, in the fire. Another page was read. And he tore it again, threw it in the fire. Until everything that Jeremiah had written and Barak had written were all Consumed by the what? Consumed by the fire. Several years later, the prophecy of Jeremiah was fulfilled. The Babylonians and the soldiers of King Nebuchadnezzar II entered Jerusalem, destroyed its walls, burned its beautiful temple, loot all their precious properties, and the pride of Israel became a humiliating picture. Israel was now in total destruction. Or particularly, the capital city of Jerusalem was in total what? Destruction. Reason? The king who was appointed by God to lead, to lead his people to God, back to God, was ig or ignored the authority of God's word. He said, in his mindset, just like the, man the mindset of many postmodern people today, oh, God's word will not come true. Second, he said, God's word is irrelevant. Third, he said, God's word is not important at this time. What is important for me is power, money, 
Prestades. Beloved members of this church, I would like to tell you this morning that the same mindset the same mindset of King Joachim is being adopted today by the world. Today, many people consider the Word of God as what? That the Bible is what? Irrelevant. The Bible is nonsense. The Bible is not important. The Bible, the prophecies of the Bible will not be fulfilled. But I'll tell you something today. But I'll tell you all of you, please listen to me. God's credit score is 100%. I will repeat. God's credit score is the highest. Whatever God says in the scripture, whatever pro prophetic utterances that God has given to his, to his prophets, not one of these will come to note. Everything will be what? Everything will be fulfilled. Our, we are living today in, in, our, in a world where science, false science becomes their authority. Human wisdom today is considered by the world as their authority. The ingenuity of human beings, intelligent human beings like university professors, great men of authority, are considered to be the what? To be their word, to be the word that they should follow and obey. But God's word, again, I would like to go back to Isaiah 40, verse 8, that our, uh, one of our students have, have read. I'd like, to, I'd like you to open your Bibles with me to Isaiah 40, verse 8. Isaiah 40, verse 8. Isaiah 40, verse 8. The grass weathers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. I will repeat. The grass will wither, the flowers will fall, but God's word will what? Endure. Endure forever. God's word is trustworthy. We can trust God's word and it will surely come to pass. At the beginning of our world's history, God said to our first parents, never venture on the forbidden ground because the moment you venture on the forbidden ground, and partook of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, death and suffering will come to humanity. Adam and Eve did not believe God's word, right? And Eve ventured on the forbidden ground, partook, partook of that fruit, and beginning the time, death came to humanity, suffering and all kinds of uh, sufferings, and all kinds of sickness we can witness today as a result of that false statement of Satan that man will not die and Eve believed on the word of Satan rather than believing on what? On God's word. On God's word. But then God said, I will give hope to humanity. Again, he brought messages to the prophets. He said, I'm going to send my son, my only son, to give his life for the salvation of humanity. He made this promise. Where can you find these promises in the Bible? Micah chapter 5 verse 2. God made this message that somehow, someday, Jesus will come. Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah made also prophecy that someday, a man will be born in Bethlehem. And his name shall be called Emmanuel. God with us. 
May I ask you this question? Did this prophecy came to be, to be fulfilled? Yes. Yes. Everything that God said in the Old Testament had all been fulfilled in the New Testament. And in the all of this will be fulfilled in the future. And so, once again, this morning, I'd like to remind all of you that God's Word is our final authority. The so-called false science. You go to public schools, you go to public universities, and they will tell you that you came from a bacteria or from a frog or from a monkey that tail disappeared and it became Pastor Levi stories. That's what the world is telling us. And these people who are telling us are intellectual giants. It started from, in 1859, from a great scholar. His name was Charles Darwin. And he made a theory that we came from microscopic organism and became a frog and later on became a monkey and later on it, become, it became a human being. But beloved children of God, the Bible plainly declares, Genesis 1, 126 to 28, that I am, you are created in the what? In the image of God. God created His world. God designed this beautiful world of ours. It was just destroyed and distorted because of human violation and man's transgression of God's command. But God created this world. He created you and me. And then he said that Jesus is coming. And sure enough, Jesus was born where? In Bethlehem. That's why we have our what? Christmas. And some people, they call this just holiday. No? But Christmas is not just an ordinary holiday. Christmas is a holy day because this was the time when Jesus was born in Bethlehem so that through his death on the cross, humanity can have what? Salvation. The Bible clearly, clearly tells us that humanity can never solve its own humanity's its own woe and problems. The only person that can solve our problem is the God who created us. And in this world that is full of troubles and problems, God made a promise. John 14, 1 to 3. In his word, he made this beautiful promise. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. Because my God has the highest credit score. What he said in the Old Testament has all been fulfilled. And he made this promise to me and to you in the New Testament that he said, I will come again. And because I cannot doubt God's word, we cannot doubt God's word, all these promises will be fulfilled. Because this is our greatest authority. And so this morning, I challenge all of you. Fell in love. Fell in love with God's word. Because here, when you fell in love with God's word, you will fell in love with the Savior of this book. And that Savior is no other than Jesus Christ, your Savior and your Redeemer. May God create a strong resolve in our heart today and that we will go out from this hall of worship with a strong desire to be in love with God's word. His supreme authority is my prayer. Amen. Amen.
Today is the second day of our week of prayer. And uh, we, we started last night. And this is a part of our week of prayer. So we're going to pray as a part of our program this morning. And I invite you to um, find your partner and we are going to pray by twos. And just remember after you pray by twos to please stay on your seats and, and be quiet because we are still going to have our closing songs. Okay, so you can find your partner and start your prayer. Um, could everyone rise for our closing song, Give Me the Bible? Shall guide me in the 
Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we are living in a world that is flooded with human philosophies. And many of these human philosophies, O oh Lord, are considered by most people of this world as their final authority. But dear God, we would like to thank you for giving us the supreme authority for all Christian living and right living and godly living. And this is the word of God, the Bible. Help us to be in love with it. Help us to take time to study it, to read it, and to be in love to the God of the Bible and to the Savior of the Bible, who is Jesus Christ. He is our only hope. He is our only way to heaven. And so by your grace, help us to love and cherish your word. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. everyone. Thank you, parents, teachers, um, members of this church. Before I pray for